Walgreens was at the center of the latest flare-up and concern about shoplifting. A 2021 New York Times article said Walgreens to close five stores in San Francisco, citing organized shoplifting. Has shoplifting always been the case in retail? Just the cost of doing business? Or is it getting worse and more organized and cutting into retailer profits? Let's bring in Sandra Campos, former DVF CEO and a CNBC contributor, along with Jerry Storch, the former CEO of Toys R Us and the CEO of Storch Advisors. Welcome to you both, Sandra. I'll start with you. Is it worse now? Uh, it absolutely is worse. It's been getting worse since the pandemic. We've seen shrink increase more than 50% since the beginning of the pandemic, and retailers are seeing more than 26% increase in organized crime. So it is definitely getting worse. You know, ultimately, that is about a billion dollars of lost um, profits due to shrink. So, yes, the factors are, are pretty broad. That said, Jerry, Walgreens is representing that perhaps the cost of trying to prevent the theft was worse than the theft itself. They've put a lot of merchandise in certain areas behind big plastic locked up cases or glass cases and what have you. It's actually led to people buying fewer products. So how do they figure out how to strike the right balance? Well, that's tough. Uh, you know, it's been a problem for a long time because if you lock the products up too much, consumers can't even get them. And so after a while, it's, it's basically like you put them behind bars and so you can't sell them. But uh, ultimately, uh, the solution has to be uh, to do something about the online marketplaces, because that's what's really driving this, is the ability for organized crime to easily fence the goods through these rapidly growing e-commerce marketplaces. That's what's changed in the world. Yeah. That's the difference from what it was like 10 years ago. That's what I was going to ask you, um, uh, Sarah, Sandra. Um, how much of this is driven by electronic, uh, sort of the, the Internet? In other words, the thieves come in, they take dozens of iPhones off the shelves, and then they are able to put them up on some marketplace and sell them for cash, which is what they really want. Is that what's driving this? Yes, and theft has become a business. You know, I call them theftpreneurs because ultimately we've had supply chain, chain shortages. Those have enabled a lot of the shoplifters to sell those stolen goods on third-party marketplaces. So whether it's eBay, Amazon, and others, they're, they're making a premium. So absolutely, that's a, a huge part of it. I think it's about 37% of this external theft came from, you know, organized shoplifting heists. Sandra, and they're going what, back and reading. what would you do now? So kind of facing this new normal, if that's what it is, and maybe it's not a new normal. Listen, these problems emerge over the last couple of years. If we see leadership changes in cities like San Francisco, perhaps we can uh, come to grips with them. If not, what is your advice to retailers? What should they do here? Should they just take the losses, try to combat them, organize their stores differently, emphasize e-commerce? What do you think they should do? Well, there's not one magic solution. So it's going to have to be a combination. In my mind, it's going to have to be a combination of efforts. And, you know, we also can't talk about shrink without seeing the correlation between the growth of e-commerce, labor shortages at retail, which has absolutely impacted this, and the inflationary impact on the economy overall. So a combination of all the different efforts, you know, you're seeing, as you talked about before, doubling up on security efforts, product behind um, behind plastic so that you can't get to it and being locked up, a variety of different things. There's a lot of technology that's coming into play that is definitely being used from a return standpoint. You know, returns have gotten higher because we've had a, an increase in the e-commerce business. So as we continue to get bigger returns and those returns go back into stores as well, there's got to be some efforts that are made where hopefully some of this technology that's being implemented now is going to help that and help offset that. The second part of it, I would say just in terms of reserves, retailers are definitely going to be implementing new and additional reserves because as you mentioned before, two and a half to three percent shrink is a new norm and it's not one and one and a half percent any longer. Uh, Jerry, the, the, the urban myth, I suppose, is that law enforcement and prosecutors have taken a very different approach uh, to what we call shoplifting and in some cases aren't uh, going to try and apprehend the perpetrators uh, or to prosecute them unless, say, more than $1,000 worth of goods is involved. How much is lax law enforcement contributing to an environment where brazen thieves feel, I'm going to get away with this, the cops don't care, the prosecutors aren't coming after me? Oh, that's certainly part of it. But uh, ultimately, uh, if you don't cut it off, you know, at the uh, at the payout, you're not going to solve it. And so the, the real solution will only happen again when there's something done about the marketplaces. Some people want to make the marketplaces liable. You know, people say, look, Amazon, you got to control these things. Go on Amazon, go on eBay, go on any of the marketplaces. You see vast assortments of the private labels of retailers. And I can promise you they're not selling that to them. Hmm. So it's very clear these are so stolen products. In the old days, 
This existed, but it was at flea markets. You have to go to the physical flea market to buy it. You can't sell nearly as many goods at a physical flea market as you can at the e-commerce flea market. Well, so if you don't cut it off there, it's never going to go away, and it's going to keep it's just going to keep growing. And ultimately, we all pay the price: higher prices. And unfortunately, stores in a lot of these high shrink areas are closing, and more will close, right. creating kind of retail deserts, which are undesirable for everyone. <laughs>